Welcome to the program today. Mono Gonzalez here in studio. You're going to have through Skype, Jonathan Kahn, bestseller. He's got a brand new book, The Dragon's Prophecy, coming out. Before we get to Jonathan, and I just want to remind everybody about the upcoming uh, Prophecy Conference in Branson, Missouri. Uh, it's going to be a great time, December 5th through 8th. You can go to prophecywatchers.com and get all the information. We're going to have over 20 speakers there. It's going to be post-election, so there certainly will be a lot to talk about. I imagine even the speakers now are kind of waiting uh, to, to give us their titles to, because we know things can be very different depending on what happens there. But join us through uh, in person or through live stream. Either way, both will be an option for you. So again, prophecywatchers.com. Well, Jonathan, here we are. We've been doing a few programs on your book, and this is, uh, again, another opportunity for us, for our audience. So welcome. Great to be back. And uh, one of the things that we've been doing is, again, for those that haven't seen, you, you know, you've written many books, and you know, we can't get into all of them. There's so many, but you you have this uh, this pattern uh, in in that 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 flavors through all the different books, and which brings us to the Dragon's Prophecy. So, if you don't mind, kind of share with how God has guided you. Yeah, all all the books. For those of those who don't know, all the books are revealing mysteries, uh, ancient mysteries that are coming true now that we're actually living. And the amazing thing is they have not stopped. Sometimes I have to I have to I have to keep on revising because it keeps coming true. So let's talk about that because this one is a little bit different. Talk about how this one's different than the others. Yeah, this is the only one that total I have done. I mean, straight because I every book is prophetic, but this is a, this is the one that totally opens up. Not only the prophetic and realm of the mysteries, but of end time prophecy, Israel, what's happening. It, it's going to touch on Ezekiel, touches on, on, on Revelation, what's happening now. The beast is in there. There are all sorts of mystery, but in a whole nother dimension than you probably ever heard with a prophecy book. Um, so this is a whole nother thing. And it's also a, this is the only book where I'm writing it and things are coming true continuously. I had to keep rewriting it. And even after I finish right now, it's still coming true. It's a, it's, it's so it's quite something. And I've never had so much war warfare to stop this book. So you know, that's the reason it's got to go out. So it's good. It's, it's, and we've never had a reaction to a book like this one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, we've, we've discussed already in, in the other program how uh, this book has become a bestseller before it even <laughs> before it even hits the uh, hits the show. Before shelves. it existed, before I finished it. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in in Return of the Gods, you bring up, which I think was pretty fascinating, the idea of these ancient entities that have been returning, and, and no doubt there's similarities to what we're seeing in our current age. Which we're not going to talk about that, but you do bring up another ancient entity, Sar Paras. Yes. Talk about that. The Bible speaks of an entity called the Sarparas. The Sarparas is actually mentioned in Daniel. And so it'll be familiar when I tell you what it did. But what this entity, it's a, it's a, it's a fallen angel it's a de- or a demonic entity. And it is, its mission is to stop the purpose of God for Israel. And particularly the end time purposes. It's the one that stops the revelation coming from Daniel mm-hmm. for 20 days. You know, and, and the thing is that, so it's a demonic entity. Now, now think about it. So if it's a, if it's a, it's against Israel for the end times that when Israel comes back in the world, this thing is going to be activated. This thing is going to go crazy. Now, what is the Sar Paras? Sar means master or ruler. Paras means Iran. So it's actually linked to Iran. So think. So what does that mean? Well, it's going to mean that Iran is going to be led. It's going to be influenced. It's going to be turned by this spirit. Behind world events are spiritual events. You want to understand it. And so what it means is, so it's no accident that Iran, which actually was an ally of Israel at the beginning, gets turned and becomes the most anti-Israel nation on earth. It is bent on the destruction of Israel. It is bent on it. Why? Because there's a demonic spirit behind this. And so even if you didn't know anything else, all you knew was that. Its job is to destroy Israel, to stop the purpose of God. And the Bible says that this this entity is actually is also linked. It, well, it'll go. I'll go farther in it, but it 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 is all it is linked to the dragon. And so you have the dragon's war using this entity behind Hamas. So behind October seventh was Hamas. Behind Hamas was Iran. Behind Iran was the Sar Paras. Behind the Sar Paras was the dragon. And so all these things and. Iran, that's why Iran became the first nation of Ezekiel's nations that he to actually, that it says they're going to attack Israel, actually attacked Israel directly for the first time this year. And as we're right, as we're doing this, I mean, people will know the answer. Iran is already saying we're going to do it again. 
I mean, it's already there, you know, so we are in this, this thing. So we've actually crossed another prophetic line for the first time ever, but it's all because of that. That, you know, Israel says Iran is their arch enemy. It's because of the spirit, the Sar Paras. It's actually, you want to understand world events? It's in the, it's spiritual, it's supernatural, it's amazing. It really is amazing. And I mean, for, for those of you, uh, just read Daniel chapter 10. Uh, there you'll see that the, the English is prince, you know, at least in the New King James, which is what I grew up learning, the prince of Persia, you know, and the prince of Greece and other things. But there's also another prince there, the prince of Israel or the Tsar of <laughs> Israel. Talk about that. I mean, here we have yeah. Daniel 10. It's like you bring it forward and here it is. Yeah, and you're translating the Hebrew. The, the notes we had Hebrew, you translated right there. Yeah, it's called the Tsar Yisrael, or you used to say prince, Tsar, or a ruler, or it can even mean general. It's mm -hmm. interesting. Well, the thing is, the Bible says that there is one, that there is a, a entity that specifically fights for Israel and defends Israel. And, and his name in Hebrew is a sentence. It means who is like God. In Hebrew, the way you say that is me, Ha'el, or Michael. If you're real spiritual, you can call him Mike, but we, it's Michael, Michael. He, Michael is actually, people don't realize it, is the defender of Israel. So you've got a war now. So now you have the Tsar Yisrael and you have the Tsar Paras. You know, and the Bible says in Daniel that they fought. It says, Michael helped me fight the Tsar Paras. So they're fighting. And so if the, if the entities are fighting, then the nations are, are gonna be fighting. And that's why Israel and Iran. And the thing is, when, when you know, Iran, launched their attack, their first attack, and it was missiles in the heavenlies. You know, and the thing is, and interesting because when the Bible speaks about these warfare, it says in the Oranos or the heavens. The word also means sky. So all these things took place in the sky. And the thing is that, and yet 99% of those missiles were struck down. Well, you know, you know, we you know we take credit for it, all that, but you know what the Bible says? There's actually a an entity that strikes down the flaming arrows of the enemy. And this is, this is who knows, I am sure that Michael was part of it. Michael was part of it. We're watching, we're watching spiritual events unfold on the earth. You know, I think it's amazing too, because you know, you, here you are writing this book, you've talked about how right in the mid midst of writing, you're having to modify things or change things. And yeah. I imagine that that's uh, happened when uh, a, a certain president of Iran had an unexpected uh, accident. Talk about that. Yeah, yeah, amazing. The president of Iran, the only president who, who was the president when Israel actually, was a, when Iran actually attacked Israel, was a guy named Ibrahim Raisi. Ibrahim, interesting, Ibrahim, his name, his name means, is Abraham. He's named after the father of the Jewish people that he's trying to destroy. He's named after, and the one who God made a covenant saying, if you, if you curse Israel, I'm gonna curse you. You bless Israel, I'm gonna bless you. So here, God says, Israel's the apple of my eye. Racy touched, struck the apple of God's eye. He sent those missiles, he struck it. About 30 days later, he was struck dead after he struck Israel. And he struck Israel, you know, he was going to attack Israel by vessels in the sky that were going to, were going to bring destruction when they crashed into the ground. So now Racy was in the sky in a vessel and it crashed to the ground. And the thing is, not only did people don't realize, not only after that attack, a few days after that attack or, or just after he, he made it, he, he threatened the annihilation of Israel. He was going to annihilate Israel. He said, there'll be nothing left of Israel. He threatened that. You don't do that. That's God's, that, that's blasphemy. You know, you know, and you know what? There was actually, then about 30 days later, he's, de he's dead, you know. And the thing is that that, that, that weekend was a, a Sabbath. The day before he was struck down was a Sabbath. So there's an appointed scripture in all the synagogues of Israel and the world that is appointed from ages past to be read. You know what it was? It was the one who blasphemes God will be struck down dead. And the other thing, the other thing, Mondo, think about this, end time prophecy. When God says in Ezekiel 38, 39, he says, I'm gonna, he says, I'm gonna bring you enemies of Israel, I'm gonna bring you against the mountains. He says, you're gonna fall in the mountains. Well, Racy was the first one of those nations who actually attacked Israel. And, and how did he die? He was brought down against the mountains. He fell upon the mountains. That's a, that is a foreshadow. You know, it's, you know, the Bible says, you know, what a person sows, they reap, and, and, and you know, I, may, may they beware. But we also know prophecy is going to be fulfilled. And, you know, I, I wrote a book recently, as many of you know, on, on the red heifer. And we're going to talk about that in a minute, because when we come back, we're going to learn about the secret of the mount. So we're going to take a little break here to see how to get our magazine. Take a listen. Ten years ago, we began an exciting journey 
a mission dedicated to spreading the good news of the soon return of Jesus. In the last two years, tens of thousands of Prophecy Watchers from all over the world have subscribed to our monthly magazine, The Prophecy Watcher. Twelve DVDs on Bible prophecy can be yours when you subscribe to our 48-page full-color magazine for just one year, print or digital format, all for a gift of $50, with shipping included in the USA. Recent events have turned the world upside down. The COVID-19 pandemic was followed by Russia's war in Ukraine, all overshadowed by the horrific October 7th tragedy in Israel. The prophets of the Bible predicted a series of end-time wars and were seeing the final pieces of the puzzle fall into place. Russia, China, Iran, Syria, Turkey. The enemies of Israel are on the doorstep, just as the Bible predicted some 2,500 years ago. The Prophecy Watcher magazine includes the writing of dozens of prophecy experts like Gary Stearman, Mondo Gonzalez, L.A. Marzulli, Bill Salas, Josh Peck, and many others, writing on fascinating subjects like the Rapture, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Red Heifer, the World Economic Forum, the Global Reset, Digital Currency, the Mark of the Beast, the Nephilim, and the Antichrist Beast System of Global Control, things you will likely never hear about in church. Twelve bonus DVDs will introduce you to Ezekiel's Gog and Magog War, We'll examine the supernatural side of the Bible as we investigate controversial issues like the Nephilim, government UFO cover-ups, and the Shroud of Turin. We'll address the Luciferian Rebellion, a mutiny that changed heaven and earth forever. Speaking of heaven, you'll enjoy Mondo's glimpse into God's creation as he explores the stunning beauty of the stars and galaxies seen through the lens of our Psalm 19 observatory cameras. 12 issues of the magazine plus 12 bonus DVDs, a $180 value, now available for your gift of $50 to support our worldwide television outreach. Care to become a fellow Prophecy Watcher? Just visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv. Partner with us today and help us take the message of the soon return of Jesus to the whole world. Well, welcome back again. We were talking to Jonathan Kahn, and before we uh, went to the break, we talked about the secret of the mound. So, Jonathan, you write about this. Here we are. I mean, th- these things are so amazing. They're happening right now in front of us. Talk about it. Yeah. The, the Temple Mount is the ground zero of prophecy. It, it's, it's, you know, every, you got Israel. Then you, in, in Israel, you have Jerusalem, and then it narrows down to the Temple Mount. Temple Mount is where it's going to take place. That The temple is going to be built. The, the Bible says in Revelation that the Antichrist will be there. He's going to desecrate it. So it's all going to be the end. Messiah is going to reign from the Temple Mount. So it's all there. So the enemy will do anything in his power to stop the purposes of God from happening on the Temple Mount because it's over for him. You know, so an amazing thing. That's why the temple, actually the dragon has control of that mount because he does not allow right now. There, no Jewish person can go on that mountain of the temple and pray or do anything related to God on the Temple Mount. Where are you to do it? Well, so people don't know this. I will just say this. I revealed in the book. But something happened at the beginning of that year that had to do with the Temple Mount. And, and it had to do with, the, the, uh, there was a fear that the Jewish people were gonna celebrate a holiday on the Temple Mount. And so all hell broke loose on the Temple Mount. There was a riot and, and it was all sorts of stuff happened. And so the, Hamas at that time issued a, war, issued a statement saying, Israel, you're playing with fire. You've desecrated, you've desecrated this Mount desecrated him. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so you're going to have, you're going to reap it. When the, the, what happened, October 7th was the answer to the Temple Mount. In fact, when, when, when Hamas issued a statement after October 7th, they said, it's what happened on the Mount. And you, we said, you, we told you were playing with fire. You desecrated our Mount. This, this is the dragon speaking because it looked like the dragon, when, when, you know, the, the, he was going to lose some of the dominion because the Jewish people are going to come back. Well, so he went crazy. October 7th is the craziness, the madness of the dragon about the Temple Mount. In fact, Hamas, you know that Hamas, I told you what they called their operation. They called it Operation Flood, but the full name was Operation Al-Aqsa Flood. It was, that's the Temple Mount. So they were literally saying it was because of what happened on the Temple Mount. And something else, you know, the Jewish people have one holiday that celebrates 
Solomon building the temple on the Temple Mount. And the thing is, they actually read the account of Solomon. They open the scrolls and they read it about the, the temple on the Temple Mount, the dedication. Well, to the enemy, that's a threat. You know, and so all over, you know what day that holiday fell on? October 7th. Hmm. And so that's why, so the Jewish people are are chanting the, the temple on the Temple Mount from Solomon. And 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 Hamas is is launching their operation Temple Mount at the same time. It's all a war that is linked to Revelation. It's amazing. Yeah, there's 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 nothing coincidental when, when you think about the spiritual realm and, and what they're trying to do. And as we look around, Jonathan, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it over the last six months. The the the, the anti-Semitism has just, uh, I mean, it's always been there, but now it has just opened up. It's become just extensive everywhere. I mean, th- that's got to be part of the mystery. I mean, to talk about that. Totally, totally. In Revelation, it says that the dragon, out of his mouth, not only comes a flood, but comes spirits, unclean spirits like frogs, it says. They go throughout the earth, and what's their job? They go throughout the earth to rouse the earth to come to Armageddon, to come to destroy Israel. So there are spirits, demonic spirits. And what we saw after this, I mean, it's amazing. You think after something like October 7th, you'd have all this sympathy for Israel. Well, the overwhelming response around the world was hatred for Israel, hatred for the victims, you know, tearing down the pictures of the hostages. You know, it was demonic, just like October 7th. It was just, and that was a taste of what's coming. That was a taste of revelation. I don't believe there has ever been such a widespread outbreak of anti-Israel, anti-Jewish hatred as what we just saw, what we recent, what we have seen around the world now. Even America, even America. And, you know, so it's telling the future and it's affecting the young. You know that most of the, almost the majority of young people are for Hamas. They believed October 7th was justified. So that, that tells you where we're going. And this is Harvard University. And you know what? They're chanting, from the river to the sea, Palestine shall be free. free. You know, that's the destruction of Israel. That's the borders of Israel. But you know what? Even that has the, 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 the fingerprints of the dragon. Because you know where that comes from, Mondo? The mystery of that? You go back to Genesis when God gave the promise to the land to Abraham. He said, from the, specifically, from the sea to the river. Again, from the sea to the river. See, the enemy is the inverter. He reverts it and he says, from the river to the sea, Israel will be destroyed. So this is totally the enemy. We saw a little taste of what's going to lead to Armageddon. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing too. Not only do we do we see the connections of what has happened in the past, but you discuss as well that there's an that as we look forward, there's this anticipate anticipation of the dragon's other war. Talk about that. Yeah, the Bible said this is all again in Revelation 12. The dragon, and it might be affecting your life, right? Well, it's going to be affecting your life. It says that he went, he waged war against the woman's other children. Well, who are the other children? If the woman is Israel, there's going to be children of Israel, in, but and they're not quite Israel, but they're children of Israel. Who is it? The, it's you. It's the believers. You are the spiritual children of Israel. The Bible says if you're born again, you're a citizen of Israel now. You're born again. You're grafted in. So he makes war against the physical nation of Israel and the spiritual nation of Israel. That's you. He wars against Israel, the physical, physically to destroy them. He wars against the spiritual Israel, spiritually persecute them, stop their faith, draw them away. So there's a war in the last days. And so in the last days, that war is going to increase. The, the dragon is going to war again. We're, what, we, we're seeing it all right now. The dragon warring against Israel, his intent to destroy them. And he's warring against the church. Look at what happened at the Olympics. I mean, you know, last supper. Mark. This is we're, we're seeing that other war every day. So so the, the church and Israel have to come together. And that's what's happening. Actually, more than any time since the book of Acts. Because they are one, they are, and, and, they, and together we are fighting a dragon. And the days ahead, we have to become dragon fighters. Yeah, and I mean, you know, what's amazing too is that, you know, we, we, we're talking a lot about how uh, exposing the enemy's workings. But yet, you know, in, in the book of Revelation, uh, as people know, not only do we have a dragon, but you talk about the dragon and the lamb, which I think is, is amazing, you know, just because that's yeah. the good news. 
discuss yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and by the way, all the books end with good news. And, and how do we do? And actually, what do we do? Because, because just a note, it's not only, let's just say, like, you know, the church, also the enemy is warring specifically against every human being. If you're in the image of God, since you were conceived, he's been trying to wipe you out, keep you from God, defile you, enslave you, oppress you, crush you, bruise you. And that's the war. He's warring. So, so we have to know, we have to overcome that. And the thing is that in the book of Revelation, you have a dragon fighting a, a lamb. Now, a, anybody in the world would place their bets on the dragon, you know, you know but the lamb wins, you know, and the, the lamb wins. And the thing is that, that you know, that's always, listen, the, the evil always comes like the dragon, fierce, overwhelming, you know, the Roman Empire against the Christians. It's like a dragon against the lambs, you know, and the Soviet Union against believers. They, it's always like dragons against the lambs, even against the Jewish people. They were like lambs, but the lamb wins. So the thing is, we win. And the thing is that, and the thing is that, that you are on the winning side and you gotta remember that because it's not gonna look like that. It doesn't look like that for the lamb. Nobody places a bet on the lamb. It doesn't look like that, but you're gonna win if you stay, if you rise and you fight and you stand. And, and you share as well about the, the ways in which, if you look at history, that yeah. the, the power of God does succeed. Yeah. Yeah, look, 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 you know, the pharaohs tried, were powerful. They tried to destroy Israel. You know, Assyria was massive, tried to crush it. The, Babylon, Rome, Hitler, the Soviet Union, they, they all tried to crush Israel. They all had the power. But here we are, and the pharaohs are gone. And Assyria is gone. Babylon has fallen. Rome has collapsed. The Soviet Union has collapsed. Hitler is gone. The terrorists will be gone. But, but, but. The nation of Israel lives because the God of Israel lives and because the Messiah of Israel lives and the people of God will live. If he is your Messiah, if he's your God, you will live. So the Jewish people, the amazing thing is not only that they, the world's been trying to destroy them, but they exist. They should be in museums, but they're alive because God is alive. That's his witness. And so you are on the winning side, which brings, to, brings us to a, a very cool secret, <laughs> which, which I believe is the next thing we'll talk about. Yeah, and we're, we're going we're gonna to put a little uh, cliffhanger there because we're going to take a little break here where you can see how to get uh, Jonathan's book, The Dragon's Prophecy. And uh, so take a listen. Some might say we've been under God's judgment for quite some time. Is it too late for America? Is there any hope for a revival? Jonathan Kahn is certainly doing his part, sharing stunning secrets from the Hebrew scriptures, secrets that Christians can't see in their English Bibles. Known as America's Rabbi, Jonathan has revealed dozens of hidden prophecies and Hebrew gems that leave us in awe. He's introduced us to Shemitah cycles, jubilees, feast days, and the Hebrew calendar, opening our eyes to God's plan for the future. His latest effort, The Dragon's Prophecy, features the precise accuracy of God's prophecies. There's a good reason it sits atop all of the bestseller lists. It digs deeper into the Old Testament prophets and the book of Revelation, describing the horrors of the October 7th attack in Israel in eerie detail. What other nation has been persecuted like Israel? What other nation gets criticized while their enemies launch hundreds of missiles into their country? Yet, protests rage across the world, accusing Israel of genocide. Anti-Semitism is straight from the dragon himself, and this disease has infected the entire world. A hardback copy of The Dragon's Prophecy is available for your gift of $30 or more, with shipping included in the USA. It comes with two free bonus DVDs. First is Gary Stearman's one-of-a-kind study on the terrorists who attacked Israel. He called it the running assassins of Gaza, specific words he found in the Hebrew scriptures that Gary translated into English. The Bible tells us exactly where the attackers would come from and what would happen to Israel following the attack, things that are happening right now. The second bonus DVD, Mondo's Mystery of the Ten Kings, is a look into the men who hold prominent positions of influence in our world today, kings without a kingdom, as the Bible describes them. I bet you can guess some of the well-known names. Jonathan's companion DVD set, offered exclusively through Prophecy Watchers, is available for your gift of $60 or more with the same two bonus DVDs, a $100 value. When you order the Jonathan Kahn Dragon Package, which includes both the book and DVD set, 
we'll send you both bonus DVDs. This $75 package can be ordered through our toll-free number 24-7 or on our online website at prophecywatchers.tv. For our international friends, please note that additional shipping fees do apply and all prices listed are in U.S. dollars. The things you'll find in Jonathan's book are things you'll never hear about in church. Exploring the Bible's mysteries for the end times is his gift from the Lord. Thanks for joining us today, and thanks for supporting this important end times ministry. Well, welcome back again. We're talking to Jonathan Kahn. And Jonathan, in, in the break there, people heard how they could get uh, not just the book, but also yeah. uh, the, the special DVDs. You know, let, let's, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, this is exclusive, guys. This is you cannot get this in, in Barnes and Noble or, or Amazon. This is the Dragon's Prophecy Uncensored. This is the Uncensored eight DVD album. It's special and exclusive. This is the one that's going to have things that I could not put in the book. It's going to have the mystery of the book, but not what I couldn't put it. What happened after the book? What's coming true? Deep into that mystery about what, how we can actually know events to come and when they're going to happen. And so, and also, you're going to see the prophecy unfold. It's going to be everything from the America the countdown to the end all sorts of other things about end times and you're going to you're going to see them unfold and also you can show it to people you can show it to your church it's so, it's so exclusive that really it's only a handful of people who even have can offer this so take advantage of it you're 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 going to really be blessed yeah a a amen to that there, there's always just an added uh, element of of seeing things happen visually so you you as we kind of wrap up here yeah. a couple more things but you mentioned before the break uh, uh, the mystery of the secret Israelis. Uh, bring that up. Let's let's yeah. unpack that. Yeah, the Bible says, you know, we, you know, uh, believers can kind of know. Okay, yeah, I'm spiritually Jewish. You know, and so that means you're a spirit, you're a citizen of Israel, a spiritual Israelite. You're not just a spiritual Israelite. You're a spiritual Israeli. Because Israel exists, so it actually speaks to us, because it's, it corresponds physically to uh, the spiritual people of God. Well, now think about this. They come back to the land, and they realize if they don't fight, they're gone, because the dragon is trying to destroy them physically. So they had to learn how to fight, people who didn't fight. And, and by a miracle, they become like among the greatest fighters on earth. You know, now... What does that mean? Translate that mystery to us. In the end times, like they had to become, for in the end times, we have to become spiritual fighters in the last days, meaning we are fighting the dragon. And meaning you can't just accept what the dragon wants to do for your life. You cannot accept, you are not to accept the sin. You're not to accept the compromised life. You're not to accept a, a, a situation that's not of God. You're not to accept it. You're to fight it. Spiritually, you're to rise and God will anoint you like he anointed the, Isra the Israelis in the, na in the physical. He's going to anoint us in the spiritual. Think about it, because the Jewish people used to be great warriors in the ancient times. You know, and we, the church, were great warriors at the beginning of the age. What was the beginning? The book of Acts. They were warriors. They overcame the Roman Empire. We are on the winning side, but you have to fight. Don't take it. Don't take what the enemy wants for your life. Fight it. In the end times, don't sit back, be a light. You're not on the defense, you're on the offense. Be a light and touch your world. Amen. Jonathan, it has been tremendous to, to chat with you. And again, we hope people get the new book and be encouraged and also to see the ways God's working in this world. So everybody, thank you for watching today. It's been a great time. Uh, appreciate your prayers and support for what we're doing here. Again, to get the message out, to get the gospel out, and also to, to equip people to stand yes. against. Again, we're in a war and I hope you see that today. So appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. The media ministry of Prophecy Watchers exists only through the faithful prayer and financial support of friends like you. Thank you for your prayers and gifts and for watching Prophecy Watchers.